Now know the sentence for the woman indicted in the death of Tito Bradshaw, a 35-year-old San Antonio cyclist. Eric Hernandez joins us live with the latest. Well, Captain Kirk and crew have gone to space. I'm Morgan Norwood from Van Horn, Texas, and I'll have the latest on the historic launch. Heavy rain overnight. Flash flood watches are in effect. We're timing it out for you. Coming up. Live from Case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. 20 days in jail, 100 days on house arrest, and 10 years probation. That is the sentence for Linda Collier Mason, the woman charged with intoxication manslaughter in the death of cyclist Tito Bradshaw. He was an advocate for cycling in San Antonio, so his death hit the bicycle community hard. Erica Hernandez live from the courthouse with the latest on that sentence. Erica? Ursula, that sentence was all a part of a plea deal that the prosecution gave to Mason. Now, back on April 1st, 2019, Mason drove drunk and hit and killed Bradshaw, who was on his bike in the 1900 block of East Houston. After she was sentenced, Mason faced the Bradshaw family and said she was sorry for what she had done. I want to let the family of Mr. Bradshaw know that I am truly sorry for the pain that, I, pain that my actions have caused them. I can only hope my attempt to apologize to everyone for the suffering and heartache I have caused will show my sincerity and heartfelt remorse. Now, the Bradshaw family was not happy with this plea deal and said they didn't understand why the DA chose not to go to trial in this case. My wife fought her tooth and nail to try to get this to trial. But for some reason, the DA chose not to take it to trial. She didn't think it was a winnable case with a woman of her age, with a trial jury. But I think it was wrong. Now, we have reached out to the DA for a comment on this plea deal, but have not heard back yet. Now, later, we'll have more on the sentencing and take you inside the courtroom where some powerful victim impact statements were given by the Bradshaw family. Live at the Kathleen Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Erica. San Antonio police asking for your help. They're trying to find a person who was responsible for the shooting of a man at the rim. 28-year-old Savan Kyle was driving through the rim shopping area the morning of December 8th, 2019. A dark-colored sedan pulled up next to him and then started shooting. Kyle crashed into a parked car. The shooter sped off. He later died at the hospital. He also happened to have his young son in the car with him at the time, but that boy was not injured. Police say the dark-colored sedan may have been a Toyota Corolla. If you have any information about this shooting, you're being asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And another case that police are asking for your help to solve a robbery at a Dollar General on the east side. Police say back on September 8th, around 8.20 p.m., a woman walked into the store near Rigsby Avenue and Rowan Road. They grabbed items off the shelf, put them in a bag. Another woman actually recognized the suspect from a previous incident, took the bags behind the counter. Now, the suspect saw the woman do that, ignored her, and grabbed several more items before heading out the store. The woman says she actually tried to stop the suspect from getting away, but that suspect pushed the woman out of the way, causing both of them to fall. That suspect then threatening to stab the woman. That's when they took off. If you have any information that can help police in this case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number, again, on your screen. The San Antonio Fire Department responding to what has become a far too familiar scene overnight. It was a fire at an abandoned fast food restaurant on the city's southwest side. As Jonathan Coto reports, this is not the first time that same building has caught fire. The San Antonio Fire Department arrived at the 2200 block of Southwest Military just before 1 a.m. to this abandoned Long John Silvers across from South Park Mall. Flames could be seen shooting out from the roof. Firefighters say the fire was contained to an air conditioning unit. However, the building did not have power. As crews arrived to the scene, they say they saw a suspicious male walking away from the building. They believe that person could have been involved in starting the fire. This is the second fire at this exact location, and investigators say it's the eighth intentionally set fire in that area in the last couple of weeks. Emergency medical services along with San Antonio Police Department also responded. 
No injuries were reported. Investigators are estimating around $5,000 in damage. Investigators say that suspicious suspect has been taken into custody for questioning and say there is no correlation between this case and the other fires in this area. The investigation is ongoing. Reporting from the southwest side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Congressman Henry Cuellar talking about the Department of Homeland Security's decision to allow fully vaccinated non-essential travelers to enter the U.S. by land or ferry ports of entry across the northern and southern U.S. borders. He held a Zoom discussion this morning about the DHS's decision to amend the Title 19 regulations. That decision lifts the restrictions that have prevented non-essential travel by Canadian and Mexican citizens across the U.S. border since March of last year. Well, after serving six terms representing Texas House District 122, Representative Lyle Larson announcing today he will not seek re-election. Larson is stepping down to follow proposed term limits that he has long supported. His political career spanning roughly 30 years, previously serving as a city council member and a county commissioner. Larson has become increasingly outspoken against his own party throughout this year's legislative sessions. No word on what comes next for Representative Larson, but even before today's announcement, numerous people making their announcement to run for Larson's district. One of those names, including former Bear County DA, Nico LaHood. Making headlines this morning, another historic liftoff for Blue Origin. Actor, famous Captain Kirk, William Shatner, he is traveling to the edge of space. It was a very exciting morning. At 90 years old, Shatner is now the oldest man ever to go into space. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more from Van Horn, Texas. Blue Origin blasting off into space, once again making history. William Shatner, best known for his role as Captain Kirk in the original Star Trek. We're beaming up. Now the oldest person to travel to space. Shatner joining three other passengers, entrepreneurs Glenda Vries, Chris Boscheisen, and Blue Origin's own Audrey Powers aboard the New Shepard rocket. There is an adventure in my life that I would not have had had I not done this. It looks like there's a great deal of curiosity about this fictional character, Captain Kirk, going into space. The capsule lifting off into space, separating from the rocket, leaving the four space travelers weightless for three minutes. The crew taking in the incredible views through those giant windows. The passenger's capsule parachuting to the ground where the celebrations roared. Shatner's space adventures no longer fiction, but now a reality. What you have given me is the most profound experience I can imagine. So what's next for Captain Kirk? Shatner, who loves music and performing, says that he's writing new music inspired by everything that he saw in space. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Van Horn, Texas. Businesses in San Antonio a bit brighter thanks to the work of a local artist. We're going to tell you about Mar Mike Arguello and his paintings both inside and outside the walls of a local business. And we know it is only Wednesday, but we have a huge game in our big game coverage. Larry Ramirez, join us live to break it all down. And we're continuing to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Still ahead, we're going to tell you about mariachis. One local artist has put some well-known faces in unexpected places, mainly on the walls of businesses. His murals, many of which involve celebrities, have made him Instagram famous. That's right. His artwork also has earned him quite the reputation locally. Katrina Weber introduces us to the artist, now known as Mike Comp, in this week's If These Walls Could Talk. With a can of spray paint in his hand, Mike Arguello is always right at home. He's doing what he loves and what he learned years ago during a chance meeting with another local street artist. And I kind of just asked him, like, hey, man, how do I, how do I get into this? Like, uh, it's super cool. With advice from that artist, Nick Soup, and a few years of art school, Arguello soon began to make his own mark on the city. Portraits is one thing that I've always drawn since I was a kid. Chances are you've seen some of what he has painted, from the faces of 90s hip hop artists to classic icons, each signed with the nickname friends gave him, Mike Cop, for his cool composure. 
when I first saw his work um, on Instagram, I was immediately like hooked. So I reached out to him. And Kit Dong recently reeled in Arguello to paint this mural inside his brand new crawfish cafe. I'm really a fan of street art, and I think it really enhances this, you know, the space. From the inside of businesses to the underside of bridges, Arguello has done it all. Some artists say that picking a favorite mural would be like picking a favorite child, but Arguello makes no bones about it. He says this one is his favorite because it's about his child, his four-year-old daughter. It was basically like a narrative on what her dreams and aspirations might be as she grows up. He not so secretly hopes her dreams might one day involve painting. His definitely do. As long as there's walls and businesses and canvases being made, I'm, I'm just going to keep doing this. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. So amazing. I mean, I love that she does these stories, and every time I'm almost like flabbergasted by how talented these artists are. And the fact that he started up just a few years ago is amazing. Absolutely. All right, you know what's not amazing outside? Yeah, we're looking at it. <laughs> I really wanted you to say Justin Horn. Is that a That's rhetorical fine. question? I was not going to say uh, Justin. I was going to say my hair in this weather. Yes, the hairometer is off the charts. The humidity is very thick today. We're still waiting on that rain. It, it arrives tonight. That's when we think the heavy rain will move in. Most of the today should be pretty quiet. The aquifer is up a tenth of a foot, 659.2. In your pollen count, Everything's low. Molds and ragweed there in the low category. Molds may jump up, though, if we do get rain overnight. We're going to talk about the timeline and what you can expect coming up. Welcome back. Happy Wednesday out there. We know uh, there was a lot of talk of rain throughout the week. Luckily, everything was a little calm this morning, but far from over. We have a few more hours to enjoy this. Yeah, we're, we've kind of narrowed our window here of when we think that uh, the heavy rain will begin and how long it will last. We, we haven't seen much today. You're right. A couple of showers this morning. We, we did see a few thunderstorms much earlier this morning out west, but nothing here in San Antonio. And right now we're just dealing with mostly cloudy skies. Sun is trying to shine through. And as you guys mentioned earlier, it's awful humid out there. 83 degrees at the airport, 88 Stinson, 83 Kelly, 83 at Randolph and a good south southeast Julie wind. A lot of 80s to go around. Canyon Lake is checking in at 80 degrees, 86 in Divine, 89 Pleasanton. And that's a place where the sun is out, so it's really boosting temperatures. 70s underneath the thicker clouds as you get up towards Comfort and Kerrville. And close to 90 down in Catula, too. 88 Kennedy, 87 out in Del Rio. Dew points. Well, you, you know if you've stepped outside just how bad it is. We're talking low 70s here. These are actually down a little bit from where they were yesterday, but still uh, awful humid. The Gulf of Mexico is open for business and pumping in a lot of moisture. We've also got moisture coming in from the Pacific, so a lot of things trying to come together here uh, when we're talking about that chance for rainfall tonight. Radar and satellite, I'll point your attention to uh, right here around San Angelo. There is a boundary right there. That is our cold front, which is trying to sink south and east, but probably will stall out some. It's right along that boundary today where we're going to see some heavy rain. I think San Angelo down to parts of Alverde County. Uh, you can see some rain there gathering in Mexico that will move up towards the Del Rio area. So areas out west, Rock Springs, Del Rio, those will be the first areas to see rain a little bit later this afternoon, and then it will work towards San Antonio overnight tonight. Big area of low pressure, some snow on the back side of this. This is a dynamic area of low pressure and that front extends all the way back down into Texas along that front. There has been severe weather, showers and storms. Meantime, high pressure is centered over the Gulf of Mexico. We've got a tropical storm that uh, made landfall earlier this morning. That moisture is being ushered up into Texas. And so again, we have plenty of ingredients here to create a heavy rain event. As far as rainfall potential goes, we think the heaviest of the rain will be across the hill country, two to four inches. Those numbers trending down just a little bit. But I think that we could still see some isolated spots, five, six, maybe even seven inches. So we're going to have to watch for that. And that would obviously cause some flooding here in San Antonio, generally on the order of one to two inches. Flash flood watches are in effect for that reason. I 35 points west, and this is going to go through tomorrow. Here's how it looks with our future cast by five o'clock today. Storms developing out west. Those work their way east, some heavy rain around San Antonio as early as 10 p.m. tonight, and then more heavy rain potentially overnight, and then even into early tomorrow morning. Still can see a few showers and downpours around before this clears out by midday, and then we get some clearing 
by late afternoon. Timeline again, a few strong storms too. We need to mention that 10 PM to about 6 AM. That's kind of our window here and uh, with the setup. We could see a few strong storms here or there. We'll watch for that as well. Extended forecast 90 tomorrow after this all clears out. Front comes through Friday. Slight chance of rain with that. Then it turns windy and cooler this weekend. 77 Saturday, 76 on Sunday. We could see lows in the 40s, guys. Wow. Can't wait to see that. Thank you. Yep. All right, Justin Horn in the house. Also in the house, Larry Ramirez. What do we got going on? You know what? It's good to see you guys. It's hey. great to see you. It's a nice bright tie, bro. I try to keep up with you. You're the one bringing the sunshine. Popping. Look at that. We're popping. Hey, what are we talking? Spurs. Hey, how about them Spurs? Free scrimmage. Free's Ooh. normally good, right? Free's best. Yeah, coming up tonight. We got the details for you and checking out the Spurs free scrimmage where you can see Jakob do plays like that. And Keldon talks about Luca being waived coming up. This Hispanic Heritage Moment is brought to you by Taco Cabana. With that unmistakable sound and a few gritos thrown in. <laughs> mariachi music celebrates the triumphs, struggles, and heartbreak of the Mexican people. While some aren't exactly sure of the origins of mariachi music, it is widely believed it developed from early mestizo folk music in the western regions of Mexico and was known as the music of the country people. The ensemble of musicians that we enjoy today took shape in the 19th century in the state of Jalisco, and during the Mexican Revolution, mariachi music was adopted as a symbol of nationalism. Because of deep Hispanic roots, mariachi music has become a large part of the Hispanic culture in the United States with its very first international mariachi conference in 1979 held right here in San Antonio. Not only in Mexico and the United States, mariachi music is enjoyed at celebrations around the world. hold morning practice because they will host their open scrimmage tonight for their fans at the AT&T Center. Now, without question, the Spurs' biggest moves in starting camp was waving first-round draft pick Luka Samanich following the Spurs' 101-100 victory against the Magic in Orlando Sunday. It's not every day you wave a number one pick, but the 21-year-old from Croatia is now free to sign with any other team after he was the 19th overall pick in the 2019 NBA Draft. Kelvin Johnson was asked about the moves since they were drafted together and played together in Austin and here in SA. It was real cool. It was friends, you know. Um, I mean, we came in the same year, so we kind of kind of came up together. But, um, I mean, it was just unfortunate things happen. I've dreaded that for over two decades. It's the worst part of the job, you know, but I've done it every time, and uh, it's just something I think that the players are, are owed that you tell them face to face and that the, you know, the head coach does it. So I don't look forward to it, uh, but it's, it's part of the business and, and we all know that going in. Tonight is the silver and black scrimmage free and open to the public. Doors open at 6 p.m. First come, first serve when it comes to seating. Scrimmage is at 7 tonight and that's at the AT&T Center. <laughs> Case at 12, Texas Sports Productions Game of the Week will feature the Warren Warriors against the John Jay Mustangs live on Case at 12.2 over the air. Both teams will be looking for their second win in District 29 6A with Warren 1 and 5 overall. They had a tough non district schedule with losses to Smith Valley, Brandeis, and Brennan, but picked up their first win against Stevens 44 28 before suffering back to back losses. That Stay positive and keep pushing forward. They're always going to be a tough opponent. They're always going to play us tough. We just got to give our best effort, come ready and prepared. And I think if we come out prepared, then uh, the score should reflect it. Warren and Jay take place tomorrow night, 7 o'clock from the Gus. The Case at 12 TSP Game of the Week. District 29 6A Cross Country Championships at the Gus yesterday morning. 
Holmes senior Michael Herrera won the boys race and led a 1-2-3 finish for the Huskies with a time of 16 minutes, 45.4 seconds. Now Warren Sonia Robinson won the girls title in 19 minutes, 44.8 seconds. You can watch a full recap of those races on the sports page at KSAT.com. It is always amazing to see the times. I know. And just... <laughs> Remember that? Oh, yeah. That. No, I was never that fast. <laughs> I do. Back were... when I was thinner and faster. <laughs> I, I want to see the pictures. <laughs> Not anymore. Okay. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> People who get Social Security are about to see more cash each month. Still ahead, we explain how much more we will be seeing and when it starts taking effect. And the United States border with Canada and Mexico will open to non-essential travelers who are vaccinated. We explain next. It's an effort to help small business owners in San Antonio and 10 different businesses have been selected to participate. Coming up today at five, Marilyn Moritz introduces us to one local chef who's benefiting from Maestro's new entrepreneur program. How helping her restaurant succeed can also help the community. New developments concerning the coronavirus pandemic. The U.S. borders with Canada and Mexico are now going to be open to all travelers who are vaccinated. That's right. This is the White House actively telling states to prepare to begin vaccinating children ages 5 to 11 years old in anticipation of an FDA and CDC authorization. ABC's Ike Ajachi in Washington with more. The Biden administration is taking another step towards normalcy, announcing a reopening of its borders with Canada and Mexico for non-essential travel starting next month. The only requirement is visitors will have to show proof of vaccination, but not a negative COVID test. It's straightforward. People want to work, shop, and visit where they feel safe. That requirement will soon be applied to many more Americans. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration submitting a text of a COVID vaccine mandate that will soon require businesses with more than 100 employees to get shots or require weekly testing at its own expense. Part of President Biden's six-point strategy to combat the virus. This is Texas Governor Greg Abbott signs a bill banning vaccine mandates in the Lone Star State. It also applies to private companies. Abbott calling the mandates an overreach, saying COVID-19 vaccines are strongly encouraged for those eligible to receive one, but must always be voluntary for Texans. The White House accusing Abbott of putting politics ahead of public health. Every leader should be focused on supporting efforts to save lives and end the pandemic. Still, Texas-based American and Southwest Airlines keeping their mandates in place, electing to follow federal policy. Chicago-based company Boeing also announcing a vaccine mandate of its own, requiring the shot for all of its employees by December 8th. The administration preparing to vaccinate even more Americans. Tuesday, President Biden on a private phone call to governors, urging them to prepare to vaccinate five to 11 year old age kids by early November, pending FDA authorization. The administration has already purchased 65 million pediatric doses of Pfizer's vaccine, more than enough to give two doses to about 28 million five to 11 year olds. Moderna and Johnson & Johnson's booster data will be discussed by an FDA advisory panel on Thursday. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Social Security and SSI benefits for millions of Americans will be increasing next year by almost 6%. That's according to the Social Security Administration. The 5.9% cost of living adjustment will begin in January and increased payments will begin on December 30th based on the increase in average wages. The maximum amount of earnings that are subject to Social Security taxable, uh, the Social Security taxable maximum that's a term, will increase to $147,000. Beneficiaries will be notified about the change in the mail in early December. A new report shows a record 4.3 million people quitting their jobs in, in August. According to the Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey report, more Americans quitting their jobs than ever before. This is the highest quit rate since the report actually started off in the year 2000. Most of the people who left were in accommodation and food services, wholesale trade and state and local government and education. As we've been covering companies across the country, they are facing a serious worker shortage. The report also found there were more than 10 million job openings at just the end of August. Hong Kong now suspending classes, stock market trading and government services today. 
They are awaiting a major typhoon due to hit the city. The Hong Kong Observatory says that heavy rain brought by that typhoon could lead to flooding and they urged residents to take precautions. Luckily, the observatory says winds are expected to gradually weaken in the afternoon. The typhoon set off landslides and flash floods in the northern Philippines, killing at least 11 people. Seven people are still missing there. And in Spain, thousands of people in La Palma wondering if and when they'll be able to return home. Take a look at this video. It is recorded by the Geological and Mining Institute. It shows how lava is moving on top of lava that has spilled out previously. A geologist from the Spanish National Research Council says that this creates a cold crust on the surface. Authorities also tracking lava flowing from the volcano towards the Atlantic Ocean. If molten lava reaches the sea, it could create a dangerous chemical reaction and even toxic gas. I actually was in La Palma a few years ago, uh, putting together stories for the tricentennial. Mm -hmm. Beautiful island. Yeah, I can't even imagine what they're going it's through right now. It's just horrible, but you know, they are volcanic islands. Yeah. Well, back here at home, 84 degrees out there, Justin Horn. Have we seen rain today? Are we going to see some later today? We haven't seen much today, but we will see some tonight. It's almost a guarantee at this point as we get some deeper moisture working in here. As we look at the big picture here across South Texas, you can see the moisture beginning to really increase there in the mountains in Mexico. That's the leading edge of that deeper Pacific moisture. And then uh, we're noticing some thunderstorms also up around the San Angelo area. That's along a funnel boundary that's going to stall out. So it'll be in this area here that we'll initially watch for some heavy rain this afternoon that'll transition over towards San Antonio overnight and we should get some heavy rain in spots as far as the rest of today just a 20 to 30 percent chance through the evening hours but as we get into tonight those rain chances really start to ramp up 70 percent chance of rain by 10 p.m. Flash flood watch is in effect for I-35 and points west that's where we think the heaviest of the rain will be especially focusing there in the hill country and as we look at tonight Again, 10 p.m. around a 70% chance of rain. We'll bump it up to an 80% chance around 2 a.m. And then rain chances will start to taper off tomorrow morning. And then we'll get some clearing tomorrow afternoon. So it really is an overnight situation. There could be a few strong storms mixed in there, too. We'll be here for you to let you know if there are any issues, any warnings. We'll also be sending out alerts via our KSAT weather app. Guys. Certainly will come in handy. If you've ever experienced that bothersome swelling in your arms or your feet, you're definitely not alone. That's right. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has some tips that you can use to ease your pain and ease your mind. Lower leg and foot swelling, also called edema, is caused by abnormal fluid from your veins building up in those areas. Many things can cause this swelling, such as standing for a long period of time, eating too much salt, or even high temperatures. As temperatures rise, the heat can cause the blood vessels to expand, resulting in fluid going into the legs or feet. Risk of leg swelling can also increase with age or being overweight. Thankfully, there are several measures you can take to reduce the swelling. Prop your feet up with several pillows when you sit or lie down. Wear compression stockings, cut down your salt intake, or just simply move around. Be sure to keep an eye out for any signs of trouble because some forms of swelling could be an indication of harmful conditions. Swelling in only one leg could signal a blood clot. Any sudden swelling or any symptoms with swelling like shortness of breath, chest pain or pressure are also warning signs. If you see any of these symptoms, contact your doctor immediately. With this Medical Minute, I'm Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News. Still ahead on the news at noon, Hillary Clinton tackling world politics again, but in a different way, a new novel, what it's about. Here's a clue. It is a thriller. And Apple may be done making iPhone 13s for this year, why they're considering suspending production of its latest phone after the break. Welcome back. Apple says they will likely suspend production of the iPhone 13 by as many as 10 million units. And this is all because of the global chip shortage. According to Bloomberg, the company was expected to produce 90 million units of the new iPhone 13 13 model by the end of this year. The report says Apple told the manufacturers that the number of units will be lower because chip suppliers, including Broadcom Inc. and Texas Instruments, they are struggling to deliver components. The chip shortage has put immense pressure on industries from cars to electronics, leading a lot of automakers to temporarily suspend their production as well. 
Twitter making it easier to remove followers with the new soft block feature. It allows users to remove a follower without actually blocking them and remove followers won't be able to retweet you or see when you tweet. They also won't be notified that you remove them. Huh. This, however, gives the removed follower a chance to follow you again. Twitter developed the feature as a way to stop abuse and harassment on the platform. Very interesting. Please don't soft block me. Yeah, no, I did. Uh, I just tweeted about you, though. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, we're on the news at noon, in case you didn't know. <laughs> we're also joined by Justin Orr. Justin, a lot going on in your world today. <laughs> It is going to be a little bit busy as we get into tonight. We're thinking some pretty heavy rain may work into South Texas. 83 so far today. We haven't had much in the way of rain, just mostly cloudy skies. 77 was low this morning. Records are 97 and 38. Those are not in jeopardy. We will get some cooler weather, though, by the weekend. We'll have another look at the timeline of the forecast and a look ahead to the weekend coming up. Well, welcome back in your spotlight news. NCIS losing their biggest star, maybe. Mark Harmon made his last appearance as a special agent, Leroy Jethro Gibbs, on Monday night's episode. Now, during that episode, the special agent decides to stay in Alaska after working on a case there. Harmon, who is 70, can that be? Ooh. 70 years old, has portrayed the show's lead character for 18 seasons since it debuted in 2003. He's also an executive producer. Oh, I did not know that, but fun fact, it has been renewed for a 19th season and the show's executive producer already teasing Harmon may not be totally down for the count. Stephen Binder said in a statement, quote, never count Jethro Gibbs out. Hillary Clinton tackling the world of politics again, but this time it's all fictional. The former Secretary of State has co-authored the new geopolitical thriller called State of Terror. The novel follows a fictional Secretary of State who races to stop unexpected threats after a series of terrorist attacks. Clinton teamed up with the best-selling crime novelist, Louise Penny, to write the novel State of Terror, and it hits bookstores nationwide. Actually, it hit yesterday. All right, well, time now, 1245, 84 degrees out. I saw the record, what was it 38 degrees? Yeah, it Oof. is. I don't think we're gonna hit that today. Yeah. No, that, that's not gonna happen. It, this is a time of year where you can get big swings. You can have really hot days, you can have some cold days if we get good cold fronts through. So far, we haven't had a really good cold front, but I think this weekend, you will notice a, a pretty significant cool down. Highs in the 70s. That sounds great. But we got to get through tonight first. Tonight's going to be a little busy. Right now, we've got mostly cloudy skies and dry conditions here in San Antonio. 83 degrees. Dew point is at 72. Feels like 88 when you factor in that humidity and a southerly wind at 17 miles per hour. Winds are going to be breezy throughout the afternoon. Here's a look at the satellite picture. A lot of cloud cover, but the sun is peeking through in several spots, and that's boosting temperatures. 86 New Braunfels, 85 in Seguin. You're at 84 out in Hondo, 84 in Uvalde as well, and clouds are a little thicker out west as the leading edge of some Pacific moisture is now starting to work in. Dew point tracker, I mentioned that front this weekend. Dew points really fall off Saturday and Sunday into the 40s, but in the meantime, we're stuck in this humid air. Here's the big picture, and you can see the rain out in Mexico. This is that leading edge of that Pacific moisture from Pamela, and it will start to spread in a little bit later this afternoon across our western counties, then eventually overnight here around San Antonio. Also notice we've got some storms up there around San Angelo. That's a frontal boundary. It is still trying to work south and east, but it should stall out before it gets into our area. However, showers and storms will focus along that front the, this evening as well. So Del Rio up to Rock Springs, the Hill Country area, that's a place we want to watch initially this evening for some pretty heavy rain. Here is the setup. We've got that pipeline coming in from the Pacific, and there's Pamela, made landfall a little bit earlier today. Is uh, category one hurricane, now tropical storm, but that moisture is quickly now spreading across the mountains of Mexico and into Texas, sort of a conveyor belt of moisture here and disturbances. And that's why we think we will see some of that heavier rain overnight. Rainfall potential. What are we thinking here? There's going to be a belt of pretty heavy rain stretching from Dallas to San Angelo down to San Antonio. And as we look at the uh, rainfall totals, and this is through basically tomorrow, uh, we're talking two to four inches across the hill country, maybe one to two inches here in San Antonio, generally speaking. Flash flood watches are in effect. And uh, that includes the hill country and I-35 
Network. I-37 points off to the west. There could be some spots, and I should mention this, where we could see more than four inches. Five, six, maybe seven inches in some isolated cases. So that's what we have to watch very closely. Futurecast shows those storms developing out west. This is around 5 p.m. today. By 10 p.m., those showers and storms are shifting east. Kerrville, San Antonio, Fredericksburg starting to see some of the heavy rain. And then overnight, probably sticks around for a while. And if we get a little bit of redevelopment, there still could be some showers and storms around tomorrow morning for the morning commute. And likely some lingering puddles and things like that that we'll have to watch out for. By the end of the day tomorrow, skies are clearing and the rain is moving out. So the timeline looks like this. 70% chance of rain 10 o'clock, 80% chance 2 a.m., 60% chance by 6 a.m. And then we see the rain chances taper off 10 a.m. towards 2 p.m. with some clearing late in the afternoon. Extended forecast, 90 tomorrow after the clouds clear, 85 Friday. Front comes through, it looks like around midday. That brings a slight chance of a shower with it, but you'll probably notice the winds more so, windy conditions Friday night into Saturday. Friday night football looks windy but cooler, 77 on Saturday, 76 on Sunday. Did you bring up Friday night football just because Larry Ramirez is in the building. I mean, I, th I felt like it would be a good transition, but good. I don't know if he's starting with... with he's not. We're actually <laughs> talking about the top Texas team right now. How yeah. about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? Four and one. Mike McCarthy has one of the top offenses in the NFL, a defense that's certainly getting better, led by Trayvon Diggs. So Jerry Jones is extremely happy with his head coach. And in baseball... Astros sprayed and drank a lot of <laughs> champagne yesterday. Coming up. The UTSA football is getting ready to face the Rice Owls for the ninth time in program history. After dropping the first three games, UTSA has won five straight and now lead the all-time series 5-3. Rice is 2-3 and three overall and 1-0 and oh in Conference USA this season. The Owls are giving up over 38 points and 387 yards a game, and that's what the Roadrunners hope to exploit as they look to improve to 7-0 and oh on homecoming weekend. And UTSA wants to pack the dome. Um, it was 20,000 fans, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, and, you know, it felt like it was 50,000 fans, so you know every game there's more and more people because they're starting to see the tension, um, the stuff that we have at this program, and a lot of the, the communities coming together to support the, the team. I feel like a lot of people are going to come out there and support us. Uh, we need everybody we can, so it would be greatly appreciated uh, if the Alamo Dome is, rock, is rocking. Kickoff against Rice is set for 5 p.m. in the Alamo Dome Saturday. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Lo of his first year, considering when you get to be a head coach, you're supposed to get all kinds of, of advantages, at least be with the team more. He didn't see that team until we got it to training camp. And uh, so you look at that, other coaches dealt with the same thing. Uh, but you'd like to think adversity can really breed some strength, and it did. Now the Texans will play at the Colts Sunday at noon. Indy lost to the Ravens Monday night, 31-20. Is, you know, pre-snap stuff lining up wrong. I think once we eliminate that, we can we'll be able to really get in the rhythm and get the run game going. Dusty Baker got drenched with champagne. It was party time inside the Houston Astros clubhouse yesterday after they beat the White Sox in Chicago 10-1 to, to advance to the American League Championship Series. The organization's fifth straight ALCS appearance. Houston will face the Red Sox starting Friday night in Houston in a best of seven series. And two more scores from yesterday. The Braves beat the Brewers 5-4 to, to win that series three games to one. And the Dodgers defeated the Giants 7-2 to, to force game five Thursday night. 
The winner will advance to the NLCS to face the Braves. A lot of happy Astros fans out there, especially Indeed. Mattress Mac. <laughs> He's very happy, right? He's got a few million dollars riding on him. <laughs> He's got a lot of million dollars, doesn't he? <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Well, SA Live helping to take care of our seniors today. And we know some delicious food is on the menu. It always is. But there's a healthy twist today. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know we mean business and we've got aprons on right now before the show even really starts. It is all about seniors today. Thanks to Gonzaga Medical Group, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yes. You're going to find out everything about Medicare open enrollment. And, of course, we've got a healthy recipe from Chef Brian West. Okay, and you have a great way to make dressing and a way to kind of keep it fresh. Absolutely. For future use. Yeah. All right. So, so basically, you want to do a three to one recipe. So it's one part vinegar mm -hmm. of your choice. This one's apple cider vinegar, okay. and then three parts olive oil, uh, and then we're going to add all of our seasoning elements in there, which is going to be that that little bit of uh, cinnamon stick in there. Just drop that whole thing in there. So drop the cinnamon. Stick oh, we're going to do okay. okay. Yeah. Right now. Okay. And then you can. Uh, you we're can add the shake it up. Shake yeah, it we're going to shake that okay. up for now because we're going to add more yeah. to this. Right. And um, yeah. okay. very flavorful dish and lots of great flavors. Now, also seniors, yeah, look at that. I can't wait to dig in. It is a deep poached salmon. Now, how about seniors and fashion? Elsa Fernandez from Eye Candy Boutique is here, and you've got a great tip for us. We do. If you want your lipstick to stay longer, put it on, put a tissue, pat some translucent powder, and it's going to stay that much longer. Okay, and that's if you're going to be, you know, if you want to give all the, the little furry friends and from Santa Fe. Society looking for a pet and yes, ears, right? we have three sweet furry friends that we can't wait to show you coming up soon. All right. <laughs> okay. And of course, a great event. Uh, or great. Event. We're going to tell you about the event centers and classes that Gonzaga Medical Group is providing for seniors. So we also would like you to send us a photo of a special senior in your life. Yes. Give a big shout out to that. Matt, a whole lot more coming up on SA Live.